everyone, it's Loomer. I'm here at E3. I'm here with uh, Darby McDevitt again. Hello again. So Darby is the lead writer of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. So collected a bunch of community questions for Darby. So we'll just start with the highest voted question is from Chelsea May 95 from Sydney, Australia, who asks, uh, at the end of AC3, Connor had grown and developed from the events during the game. However, at the end, it seemed like there are still lessons to learn in future adventures. Is there any chance of further hearing his story? Well, uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to say yes or no at this point, but what I will say is that, uh, yes, we're happy that Connor is a beloved character, we're happy that people connected with him, uh, but this series, uh, uh, for quite a while, this, this uh, particular group of characters was always designed to be the Kenway family saga. So uh, obviously when, when AC3 was announced, we kept Haytham a secret, um, but he was an important part of this series. So and. At the same time they were developing AC3, we were developing AC4 with Edward Kenway. So this Kenway family saga, I think, will in the end end up being a pretty amazing achievement. But of course it's going to mean that uh, people aren't going to see as much of all these characters as they wished. Um, so I would love to see another Connor game, but we're not going to talk about that at this point. I figured, I figured as much. <laughs> okay, so next question is from um, Karim M. from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, who asks, are we going to see previous characters like Rebecca, Sean, William, and the ones who came before? <laughs> there will be familiar faces both in the, in the, uh, uh, well, in the, in the present, and then uh, as we announced actually at our Sony uh, uh, stage demo, uh, Avalon is actually going to make an appearance in our game in a very unique way. And then I can promise that if you do your digging, every single assassin that we've ever invented will have some kind of presence in our story. Um, it might not be in the way that everyone thinks, but uh, we, we, we really do a, worked hard to make the, uh, the legacy of what we've done before be uh, <laughs> like that. The legacy of what we've done before. <laughs> Those that came before, what we've done before. Anyway, sorry. Uh, so yes, there will be the, the presence of a lot of familiar faces, um, but in what way? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna disclose it at this time. And I think Aveline is actually, is she exclusive to the PS3 and PS4? Yes. Ex exclusive to the PlayStation family. Uh, an hour of Aveline content. And, and uh, as I said, because you work for Abstergo Entertainment, there's a unique way that we get, we, uh, get Aveline's story in there. That's right, because Liberation was an Abstergo Entertainment story-like exactly. thing, like exactly. entertainment product. Okay, next question is from Nightmare95, who says, Can we expect to see modern-day mysteries and puzzles similar to the emails and glyphs from previous series? So um, the short answer is almost. Uh, we have a huge amount of uh, we have a huge amount of content that's uh, hit, like scattered throughout the the present day. A huge amount of content to discover about all kinds of different facets of our world. But they're not. We're not going to get through them through glyphs specifically. We we access them in a different way. So. I mean, the glyphs were very cool, and they were specific to Subject 16 and his predicament and his story. Um, we, we always want to have lots of cool hidden content, and I think this game probably has the most hidden secret content in it, but it's, it's accessed in a slightly different way. So, yes and no, maybe? <laughs> cool, cool. All right, next question is from Eden Holder from London, who asks, are we creating the modern day character, as in character creation and choices of dialogue, and will we have something similar to the Desmond missions in AC3? I'm not gonna say too much about that, but uh, you are you. But we're not gonna we're not gonna go too deep into into. Uh, wow, let me see. I always forget how much they've allowed me to say because we like rolling these things out at different times. Um, I'm gonna say. Uh, I will say this. Uh, no, it's not gonna be uh, similar to the Desmond missions. No. That was very much like first-person platforming. Uh, that's not what we're about in, uh, in, in, the, uh, in this one. But it will be first person. Uh, yes, actually, Ash already told a really big read, uh, outlet that yes, it's first person. But it's much more about exploration and uh, exploration and mystery in this one, not the platforming. Yeah, that sounds really exciting. Um, okay, cool. So I actually have a question I just kind of wanted to wonder about. Um, we talked about how Edward is kind of, uh, he's more, He's more, he'll readily screw over people to kind of get what he wants. He's kind of like an, a little bit of an anti-hero. How much does that translate to like the gameplay? Like the games have always said like, you know, your, your ancestor did not kill civilians and everything. Um, like, but Edward might kill civilians. Like does that translate in the gameplay in any way or is it mainly like other stuff? <laughs> Whoa. We're going, 
Yeah, we're, this is, we're being assaulted on all sides. Know, right? <laughs> Beset on all sides by rabid fans. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, what was the question? Oh, uh, like how Edward's lack of yes, morality. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, Edward still, uh, we, we, we still created him as he's a character with a really good heart, uh, but he has a real distaste for authority. So um, uh, I don't think we're going to be killing civilians in this. Um, we will be hunting a lot of things for uh, for upgrades and things like that. We took a we took a huge uh, page from uh, Far Cry 3's handbook, and we've uh, we've implemented a crafting system that's much much more streamlined and accessible. Uh, so uh, so he's going to do a lot more hunting, I think, to to upgrade his person. But no, we keep that sort of uh, that that core sort of uh, morality because Edward is brash. He's really reckless. He's got a bit of charm. He's a heavy drinker. Um, eh, but uh, but we need to have something in there of the kind of like the Haytham Connor uh, th personality. You know, we want him to feel like he's part of the same family. You know, um, so yeah. Okay. So next question is from Grant from New Zealand, who asks: Is the Creed ever going to be prevalent again? It just seems with every subsequent game, it gets less and less relevant, and being completely removed in AC3 altogether. <laughs> so are we ever going to see it be a major element in AC game ever again? I would disagree with the the Creed being less and less prevalent uh, maybe AC3 but there's a story reason before that for that but uh, Revelations had a very big creed and and so did Brotherhood so um, maybe there's not as much like philosophical dwelling on the creed but that's probably because Ezio knew it by heart and you know uh, yes though uh, there is a um, I don't I want to spoil too much because this game has a very different trajectory than the, the other games Edward comes at the uh, the uh, Brotherhood in a very different way um, and he himself is a pirate who who bounces between assassins and Templars. He's got a, assassin friends, but they're but they're always kind of angry with him for taking their creed in vain. Almost, you know, he he likes their techniques and their uh, their tools, but he doesn't really think the creed applies to him. And he's always got people reminding him that he's he's messing things up um, in pursuit of his own uh, private goals. So, but there is a huge sort of brotherhood and uh, how he. Con con is in conflict with that is, is one of the core features of our story. But we haven't really said a whole lot about that because we want it to be a surprise. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited. Okay, next question is from Empress B who asks, are there any female characters we can look forward to that have a great sense of depth to them and not portrayed as sexual objects as shown in the initial trailer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's actually, yeah, there's quite a, there's a, there's a few uh, female characters um, and uh, like Edward's, uh, Edward, well, I'm not going to get into this. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, there are definitely uh, deep female characters in this, um, and I think the uh, the the what was portrayed in the trailer is uh, to give you a, a sense of the, the just pirates in general. But that what's shown in the trailers doesn't actually literally apply to Edward all the time. It might apply to all the other pirates around him. Uh, I've written Calico Jack Rackham as one of the most sort of debauched and disgusting pirates. Uh, Edward doesn't reach that level. He's a, he's got much, much more of a you know a heroic quality to him. So each pirate I've designed to have a very specific personality, and I want that to come through. Um, and that trailer was definitely designed to give you the pirate theme as a whole. Um, I think people are going to be surprised. Edward. Uh, well, I will let them discover for themselves. Yeah, but there's at least like, a, is it Anne Bonny? I think is her Anne name. Bonnie, yeah, Anne Bonny was a very famous female pirate. Um, she was actually only a pirate for three months or so before she got captured and sent to uh, Kingston or Spanish Town, as it was. Um, but she lived in Nassau for uh, almost three years before she hooked up in, into piracy. So we actually show this entire span of her time in Nassau and falling into piracy. That's why a lot of the concept art you've seen of her doesn't have her in her pirate outfit yet. Um, she's actually living in, in Nassau and working in a bar there. Cool, cool. Um, all right, maybe one more and we'll wrap it up. Okay, so last one is, will Edward's daughter and wife make an appearance in the game? And if yes, how important are they to the main story? Ooh. This is from Forsaken, for those of you who haven't seen yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I won't say whether or not they appear or how they might possibly appear, but um, Forsaken is canon. So uh, all the events that we've, uh, you know, interwoven, I mean, it's got to be at least mentioned, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, so I, I have one last question. Um, I remember last year someone asked Corey, like, if there was anything specific that he recommended they do in the game 
Um, and he pointed out that Captain Kidd missions were kind of a highlight that you should definitely go out of your way for those. So I was wondering if you had anything similar or if you kind of just, people should just be let loose and do whatever they want. Yeah, gosh, I, um, okay, yes. Um, we are putting a huge emphasis back on stealth. Uh, not just the tools that you use to be stealthy, like I've mentioned in interviews recently, we removed the Brotherhood. We've removed some of those things that make stealth options like incredibly easy, where if, if you're mo moving through the underbrush and you, uh, that's nice. Thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, we've 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 taken great care to improve the like the guard detection AI to make it uh, as uh, as, uh, as it's hard to talk about this, but like there's so many elements that go into good stealth. One is like the layout of the of the area. One is the guard placement. One is the stalking zones and stealthy areas and. Uh, one is the guard detection, like how how easy is it is for guards to see you, how easy it is for guards to get away from you. All these things um, come together in a, in a crazy way. So, with that being said, I think the plantations in our game are amazing. These are basically things in the open world and in the cities where you have to basically sneak around through them, find the guy that's holding the key to the warehouse, kill him, go to the warehouse, open it up, and your pirates can loot the thing. Um, the, the key holder though is supposed to be generated in a different place every time so they replenish and you can just keep robbing them after a couple days right um, those are great the smugglers dens are all amazing a lot of them you actually have to access through under a lot of them you have to access through your diving bell so you actually go in like bare fisted you know and you're like choking people out as you go through these smugglers dens those are amazing um, there's a huge amount of content and we've really taken great care uh, to interlink it all in the best possible way. Treasure maps that lead to upgrades for your jackdaw. And then we have a huge amount of side missions that I can't say anything about them because they're, they are integrated in um, just off the main path in a really great way so that you feel like once you get to a certain point in the main story, these side missions open up that if we've done the main story the right way, you're gonna want to do these side missions too because they, they tie kind of directly to Edward's central conflict. Um, but I can't say too much more about that, uh, but it's gonna be great. Awesome, all right, thanks so much Darby for answering questions again. Thank you, um, Thank you all. <laughs> all right, so uh, <coughs> uh, thanks for all the questions everyone. Um, if you want, uh, oh my god. <laughs> I'm going to play point man for you now. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, so make sure you subscribe to the channel for seeing more. Uh, <laughs> if you want to see more interviews and videos I'm doing here at E3, be sure to check out the playlist. I'll have links like in the video description at the end of the video. So thanks again. See you guys.